How goes it, family? How goes it? How goes it? Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hope that you guys are having a great and exceptional day and enjoying every single moment of being alive, no matter what the situation may be. All right, so today's topic, I will be talking about my generation, the beautiful, wonderful millennial generation. Now, this article that I actually came across the other day really spoke to how the United States economy was measured by a good chunk of well-to-do um, millennials across the United States of America before the unfortunate COVID-19 pandemic, which has basically changed the landscape of most uh, job markets, not only just within the United States, um, but throughout the world with, you know, governments and businesses, you know, the way that they've been structured within 2021 is just the new norm for people to work from home. And I love every single moment of it. According to this article, um, there are op- approximately 600 and 18,000 uh, millennial millionaires out there. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Getting a round of applause on that one. M- you know, millionaires being created every day because people are just, I call the think outside the box and not just trying to be, live the structural lifestyle that society says you're supposed to live. Those with a network of over $1 million in the United States, according to a 2019 report from Coldwell Banker Global Luxury and Wealth Engine, which defines uh, million uh, millennials as those born between 1982 and 1996 ages 23 to 37 and this is back in 2019 obviously and before i go further one thing i can say that i am proud of my millennial generation is that a good chunk of us are not and never have really been you know enthusiastic about being basic nine to five peoples or anything wrong with being basic nine to five no but i just think we i know that we're living in a time frame where being basic nine to five is just a way for most people to just barely get by, depending on what you're doing. Now, if you're a um, you know, specialist in a specific area, but even then, so if something bad happens, like a pandemic or um, you get fired, then you know that that um, earned income dries up and then you have nothing else. So you have to have, you know, um, multiple streams, you know, that backup plans. The idea of only having a job for the next 30 to 40 years just doesn't seem too appetizing nowadays to most people. And I'm just going to be realistic. It doesn't seem appetizing to me whatsoever. Um, that was the, you know, the, the Gen X slash um, baby boomer generation. That was normal for them. The Gen X generation, I think that was the generation that actually started to become normal for to see more and more millionaires out there. Because if you, you know, if you think about it, there weren't as many millionaires in the, um, the United States or around the world. Um, during the baby boomer generation, there was this, there was a smaller handful compared to what you had during in the Gen Gen X days because that's when the tech boom started to really take off. Obviously, with the millennial generation and every other generation after that, you know. But you know how you know. But however, the idea of making money in our sleep, as far as a millennial, um, taking month long vacations, living you know wherever we want and you know having a life that falls in line with our you know on our terms and not just the terms of others seems you know like more of a life worth living you know for a lot of people it's very depressing the idea of just thinking well i have this job uh, and whether i love it or not is cool um but if you love it it makes it better but i want to live i want to live in hawaii or i want to live in florida i want to live in another foreign country you know something to that effect but my job keeps me um limited to where i can live at and whatnot so that's why the idea of you know making money in your sleep having multiple streams of income has become the new norm because people do not want to fall in the, um, the category of um being stuck i'm not even gonna say being basic but being stuck to where they don't have options there's plenty of people i know who would love to live out in the middle of montana michigan nothing is there anything wrong with that absolutely not love to live in the middle of alabama uh middle of nowhere alabama nowhere texas a lot of people love that you know or love would love to live in uh, philadelphia or live in um, denver colorado or would love to live in miami but because of their job that does not allow them to do that but that has changed with the pandemic for a lot of people I can't tell you how many people I know who work from home have had the opportunity um, to to move and enjoy and you know enjoy living in other places even or if somebody wants to move to another country you know it's like if your job allows you more freedom then the idea of having a job actually seems more worthwhile you know um, that's why I envy the blue collar worker because you know a person that's an electrician especially certified a mechanic you know a plumber and whatnot they 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 have a you know or even people that are in the it industry you know majority of the time they have the opportunity to live in other parts of the country you know they might not make the same amount of money but they can't they don't just have to live in a, a new york or california or the dmv washington dc maryland virginia area they can live in 
um, Mississippi, Alabama, because Mississippi and Alabama needs mechanics. They need IT specialists. They, you know, so it's like, you know, when you have skill sets, you know, they can live in Georgia. When you have skill sets that are neat, that are actually essential and needed, even people like that during the pandemic, they weren't unemployed because their, their skill sets are essential and needed. You know, uh, just that's the best way to look at it. But I digress. Like I said, I could talk about this all day, every day, if you know what I mean. But yeah, this is the idea of being able to, you know, as you see in this picture, people just loving life, laughing, you know, um, now it's become the new norm for especially people who are entrepreneurs and make money online to go out on a Tuesday night and not only go out on a Friday night to meet up for drinks or dinner or coffee and whatnot on a Monday night or a Wednesday night and not having to worry about, you know, making sure that they get home at a certain time because, you know, they have to, um, you know, make sure that they get a good enough re night's rest in order for them to um, get up in the morning and fight the traffic, you know, that's that's really changing for a lot of people. It's really changing, and I love I love that. I, if you ask me what's the best thing to come out of 2020, it's that, what I just explained right there, all right? But anyways, I digress. You know, people being able to live more, their life on their terms, it just, it kind of, and you, it actually intensified because of the pandemic. I mean, I just leave it at, it, leave it at that, all right? But anyways, um, the back to the article, um, they stated that, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, people wanted to live a life that's worth living and I just like worth getting by. Also, you know, the article really went in on talking about the population of wealthy young people is growing. The report finds um, they are getting richer by 2030. Millennials will hold five times as much wealth as they have today and are expected to inherit over $68 trillion from their predecessors in the great transfer of wealth. The great transfer of wealth, the article stated, refers to the trillions of dollars that will be passed down to millennials from their baby boomer parents who are considered the wealthiest generation in history. Now, the reason why that, because the baby boomer generation was the last generation to actually have, you know, they, they are collecting, uh, not all, but most are collecting social security. They were the last generation to have, you know, guaranteed pensions, whether they worked in corporate America, whether they worked for a uh, government agency, you know, the smarter ones had investments as far as for retirement outside of what I just mentioned so that they could be able to pull money from multiple resources. And then the, even the smarter ones had their own businesses. So the list can go on, you know, and had other multiple investments. So the list can go on and on. Now, when it boils down to a family, in my personal opinion, our generation has been living the height of the information generation and thinking and living outside of the box generation, which I love to call it us. More businesses have been created online. More assets are being created online more, and people and more people having a minimalistic lifestyle seems more and more appealing, especially after the 2020 pandemic seems more appealing um, all at the same time. I mean, I think people wearing suits is going to become a thing of the past. If you really want to be honest about this, um, it's, it's just going to be, um, you know, people wearing suits and things of that nature is going to actually become a thing of the past going to work, you know, because if more people are working from home, why do you need to wear a suit? I mean, I know people that are in the military that they're, um, that they've been working from home and, you know, I'm not going to say any names, but you know, they, they're, they're supposed to be in uniform when they, um, get online, but they're just uniform from, um, you know, head, from head to down to the, um, the waistline or whatnot, but they're just chilling in some shorts because, you know, the, it's just showing them the camera while they're online. So, you know, that this is becoming the new norm and more and more young people are going to want to jump at that chance instead of jumping at the chance of like they were in a 1985 movie with uh, Bruce Willis and having to be suited and booted and have to, you know, sit in traffic and, you know, go be in a place and around people they don't want to be around, you know, so that's just and then you know, more and more people want to become millionaires because more people want to live their life on their own terms. I can't really put it any other way, it, you know, and I get it. I'm all for it, you know, <laughs> you know, make work work for you, make the money work for you so you don't always have to work for it, you know. That's why I always say hashtag make money moves or you will live broke like a fool. It's just, that's just the times we're living in, you know. Um, but anyways, I digress. Now, back to the um, actual um, story at hand. According to the article, Almost 44% of millennial millionaires are concentrated in California. Um, and I believe um, that's can, you know, that's changed now because of, um, you know, a lot more people working from home. So a lot of people, because Texas has become the number one state people are moving to the United States of America right now. And the pandemic just intensified it even more. So people like, hey, I, w I don't want to pay outrageous taxes. I want to, you know, cut my living expenses and still be a millionaire at the same time. So it's just more appealing for a lot of people. 
Um, but the article stated that's consistent with general millionaire population report says adding state also has the highest percentage of business owners. Now this was back in 2019, 20%, 23% and the highest percentage of real estate investors. Um, New York was actually ranked number two. That's another state people are actually, um, with the pandemic has actually intensified people to say, I want to move south or go um, southwest or go to the Midwest so I can pay less taxes um, and cut my rent in half and cut my mortgage in half, you know, et cetera and so forth. It's all about, you know, where your money can go for you. And, and that is a money move. And people are millionaires and they move to a cheaper state, then they've cut their expenses, you know, significantly. So they got more money to spend and they got more money to invest. And that's what most rich people are looking to do. They want to be able to um, have more money to invest and more money to save, but really they're, they have an investor mindset. That's what I really meant to say. They got more money to save and invest. But anyways, I digress. All right. Now, um, and that's why I said right now, it's like place states like the Golden State in California need to change how they do certain things in order for them to want to attract more younger people to want to live there in the future. You know, so you got to work on that cost of living. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, but anyways, um, you have uh, places because uh, New York is actually home to 14% of um, millennial millionaire population. Top zip code for actual young millionaires, though it is neither uh, California or New York, it actually was very surprised. Traverse City, Michigan. I've never been to Michigan, so I can't speak on it. But um, these and these are the other cities that um, you have you have a good chunk of millennial millionaires um, living. And I see. Um, you, you know, Traverse City, Michigan, Fremont, California, um, you know, the Twin Creeks, English Town, California, Saint, you know, the Bay Area, of course, because that's Techville. But Austin, Texas is becoming the new Bay Area of Texas. So they need to be added to this list. I'm just going off of what the article said. Potomac, Maryland, you know, um, but de definitely, um, definitely uh, places like that and even Florida and whatnot have had an increase in millennial um millennial millionaires within 2020 and now 2021 and that's just keeping it real at the end of the day uh like i said these numbers were actually were more you had 44 percent of millennials actually millionaires actually living in california but um when your job goes online and your employer says if you don't care where you live as long as you report at xyz time and do what you're supposed to do then hey you go with your money i mean even states like nevada and arizona have gotten um, um a lot of population from california of working people Mostly middle class people, though, it's like, um, yeah, because, you you know, New York, there's there's parts of the country right now where you can't be basic and it's New York and California and the DMV area. Um, and now what's next on that list is going to be the Atlanta, Georgia area, the Austin, Texas area, the Houston, Texas area, the Dallas, Texas area and um, Miami, uh, Florida at the same time. Well, you're not when I say basic, that means you can't just have a, a job that you get paid twice a month or every week or whatnot. You got to be the person that has multiple streams of income. You got to be the outside of the box thinker. Now, these states don't have the high tax rates that you see in California, and New York, but the cost of living will go up. Cost of houses going up. Cost of rent will go up. So I, it's like I always say, don't the comfort zone is a death sentence. So don't do that. Don't move to Texas and be basic. My people that are moving to Texas, don't do that. When you when you move to Florida, don't be basic. Think outside of the box. That's all I got to say. If the pandemic didn't teach you that, if the, the financial meltdown of 20, uh, 2007 didn't teach you that, I, it's like I said it before, as I said it again, nothing ever will. All right. Now, Traverse City, Michigan, I had to put the map on there because I've never heard of this place. It's um, a couple of hours away from Detroit. It looks like it's actually, um, you know, obviously it's on Lake Michigan, but it's actually looks like in a sense, it's kind of closer proximity to Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, you know, in the heart of the Midwest. But Traverse City, Michigan is actually historically a tourist destination town. You know, every state has it, has one for the most part. Um, the Lake Michigan Beach Town, that's what it's known as, has a robust second home market where luxury homes generally start at $500,000, which I was... But, you know, for luxury homes in Michigan, that price makes sense because luxury homes in, in uh, Virginia and California and whatnot is like two million to a million dollars and more. Um, and it's a far cry from obviously living in Silicon Valley zip code. So if you're a person that loves the beach life, but you don't want to pay Silicon Valley money, you can, you know, living in a place like this, your money can go further. And that's once again. That's another thing where your money can go further, where you can save more and invest more. That's what it's about. And that's why I said um, you're always going to have people 
um, move, moving to other areas. I mean, like I said, I've heard of people going to Montana, they've gone to Colorado, they've gone to, especially the states where there's a lot of uh, Wyoming, you know, a lot of states where there's a lot of land and it's just open, you know, because a lot of times people don't want to be in a crowded city. So I get it, you know, especially when you get older. So, you know, where there's this open land, you can buy, I mean, heck, Kanye West owns acres and acres of land in, in, in uh, Wyoming and whatnot. So he, and he just has his own little compound and peace of quiet. I'm sure he's paying less taxes. So, hey, it's a, it's a women's city. And I'm sure the state of Wyoming is welcoming bro with open arms because that's just a rich person that, you know, it's just, you know, this is where people are going. People are getting smarter with their money nowadays. The information, they were at the height of it, you know. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Now, um, the pandemic, with that, there has been a bigger push for millennials to leave California and leave New York, to move to cheaper states, like I said, Texas, Georgia, Florida, Colorado. As the world goes more digital and global, I believe because of COVID, we will see more millennials make a bigger push to reside where they're, not only where they get a bang for their buck, but I believe you're gonna see more and more, because this was happening before the pandemic, you're gonna see more and more millennials actually moving to foreign countries where the cost of living is even cheaper there compared to living in Texas, compared to living in Florida. You know, there's always a place one can move to where the cost of living is much cheaper. Um, and it's just, people gotta work figure out what works for them and then go from there. Cause at the end of the day, most working people and especially um, millionaire millennials want a life that they don't have to take a vacation from. And I and I applaud that effort because you know, that's what I'm working for. Uh, I used to go on vacation um, at least three to four times a year because I was trying to es escape the life that I had. And um, it's not like it was a bad life or whatnot, it just wasn't for me. So, um, you know, I've transitioned to the West Coast because I wanted to be able to live in an environment where I feel like I'm on vacation. Every time I walk out, I see beautiful mountains, I see the palm trees, the ocean. I like, I feel I'm, like I'm at home or whatnot. And I implore all the uh, people out there, no matter what generation you're in, to find your piece of happiness, but work towards having that 365 days out of the year instead of just 10 to 20 days out of the year, if you know what I mean. It's my personal opinion. As you see, I'm a part of the Gold Standard Partners, uh, G999. Where uh, uh, Bitcoin, it's all about being able to buy Bitcoin and refer others to do it. And like I said, you don't have to pur purchase a package if you don't want to. You can sign up for free if you're a Bitcoin investor like myself. Buy some Bitcoin and, you know, go from there. But if you sign up and get a package, you become a part of my team, I'll give you a call. We'll go from there and we'll make money moves together. If not, it's all good. Like I said, I don't force anybody to do anything. All right. Always remember, family, you can't get fired if you own the company. As you see, millennials are the, the uh, generation of owning companies and owning um, assets on all levels, whether it's stocks, bonds, real estate, cryptocurrency, digital art, you know, just a multitude of things. It's all about ownership on some level, all right? So do the great thing, free things, family. Like, share, and subscribe. Check out the online store, support your local businesses. And as I always say, make money moves or you will live broke like a fool. Take care, family.